Welcome to Lecture Online, and here's another interesting example of how bottom mechanics works. This is the lower leg uh, lifting a heavy weight, let's say a 100 pound weight, by lifting the leg up to make the leg straight compared to the upper leg right here. This is the lower leg, this is the bone inside the lower leg, that's the length of the bone. Notice that the leg currently makes an angle of 40 degrees, let's say that it's stationary. The muscle, that's a thigh muscle here, that's connected through a tendon to the leg bone right here at a distance of one-fifth the total length of the leg bone, and it's that tendon that pulls on the leg bone up that's able to suspend the weight of the lower leg plus weight that's connected to the foot there. Now, how do we find the force? What we're trying to do here is we're trying to find how much force is required on that tendon to hold everything up in place. Notice that the direction of the tendon is at an angle relative to the direction of the bone. There's about a 25 degree angle there as the tendon is wrapped around the knee like that. Okay, let's try to find out what that force is. Again, if everything is in equilibrium, then we can say that the sum of all the torques about the hinge there on the, about the knee is equal to zero. The sum of all the torques about point A is equal to zero. Well, what's that equal to? Zero is equal to Let's first begin with the weight of the leg. Now the center mass, let's assume that's about at the halfway point, but we need to have this perpendicular distance right here. So let's call this distance one. The weight of the leg causes a clockwise torque about that point, that means a negative torque. Negative the weight, mg, of the lower leg times distance d1. Next we'll tackle the big weight right here, the 100 pound weight. Again, that causes a clockwise torque about point A, that's minus 100 pounds, multiplied times the distance, the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force, that would be this force right here, that's 100 pounds. So we're looking for the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force to the pivot point, to point A, that would be distance two, like that. And finally, now we have the tendon pulling everything in the opposite direction, and that's a negative rotation, or I should say a counterclockwise rotation that makes it a positive torque, plus the force exerted by the tendon, essentially by the thigh muscle there, and it's pulling in the opposite direction. Now, the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force to the pivot point could be hard to figure out here. But what we can do instead, we can say, well, we know that it's attached one-fifth the length of the leg bone and, yep, yeah, one-fifth the length of the leg bone right here. And it's pulling at an angle relative to the perpendicular. Let's say this is the perpendicular line to the bone and let's, call, let's find the angle here, let's call that the angle theta. So theta is the angle between the perpendicular to the bone and the direction of the force. If this is 25 degrees, then theta would be 90 minus 25 degrees or 65 degrees. Instead, what we can do then here is F is equal times the length here, the distance L divided by five, and times the cosine of the angle theta. That's, in this case, is easier to figure out the torque caused by the tendon right there in that direction. Again, it's L over five distance away from the point of rotation, and then we multiply that times the cosine of the angle between the vertical and the direction that it's pulling. Notice if the angle is 90 degrees, then it performs no torque at all, and the cosine of 90 would be zero, which means that that makes sense. And if the angle here is zero degrees, the cosine of zero is one, then it would be the, the distance would be the total of L over five times the cosine of zero, which is times one. It's of course not zero, theta is 65 degrees. Now what we're doing here is we're trying to solve for F. We're going to plug in some values for D1 and for D2. Zero is equal to the weight. We say the weight of the lower leg, the mg, is equal to 100 pounds. That's minus 100 pounds times the distance here, distance one. Distance one would be L over two. Let's draw the triangle over here. So we have the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse here is L divided by two. This angle here is 40 degrees, 40 degrees, and we're looking for this distance right here, let's call that D1. So D1 is equal to the hypotenuse times the sine of 40 degrees because it's the side opposite to the angle. This becomes D1, and D1 is equal to the hypotenuse, L divided by two, 
times the sine of 40 degrees minus 100 pounds. Ooh, what's going on here? The weight of the lower leg. Let, let me change that a little bit. Um, I think it should be 10 pounds, not 100 pounds. 100 pound lower leg, that would be quite a big person and that does not make a lot of sense. So let's go ahead and reduce that to 10 pounds, which is a lot more reasonable weight for the lower leg of a person. Now we have the 100 pound weight. Multiply times D2. Now D2 has a similar triangle right here. But in this case, the hypotenuse will be the full length of the lower leg L. The angle still is 40 degrees. We have D2. D2 will be the hypotenuse L times the sine of 40 degrees. Again, it's the opposite side to the angle. So 100 pounds times L times the sine of 40 degrees plus the fours that we're looking for, F times L divided by 5 and times the cosine of theta. In this case, theta will be 90 degrees minus 25, which is a cosine of 65 degrees. Since everything is set equal to zero, we can see that every term has an L in it and the L can simply cancel out then. So this L and this L and this L cancels by dividing both sides of the equation by L. Simplifying things a little bit now, we have zero is equal to uh, minus 10 divided by two, that would be five pounds times the sine of 40 degrees. Minus 100 pounds, pounds times the sine of 40 degrees, and sometimes it's better just to put parentheses around that. And then we have plus one fifth F times the cosine of 65 degrees, 65 degrees. There we go. Simplifying things a little bit more, we get zero is equal to minus 105 pounds times the sine of 40 degrees by combining those two, plus one fifth times the force times the cosine of 65 degrees. And finally, we can now solve for F by moving this over to the other side, multiplying both sides by five, dividing both sides by the cosine of 65. So the force required becomes 105 pounds times the sine of 40 degrees times five and divide the whole thing by the cosine of 65 degrees. And now we're ready to calculate that with a calculator. 105 times five times the sine of 40 and divide that by the cosine of 65 and we have 799 pounds. F equals 799 pounds. That is the force required by the, the thigh muscle. That's, of course, that strength that comes or the moved over to the tendon that's attached to the bone. But the tendon has to pull on your bone with a force of 799 pounds to lift or hold the weight of 100 pounds like that. And there's a lot of people that use the gym on a regular basis that can indeed have 100 pounds on their leg at a 40 degree angle and keep it stationary like that. Imagine the force required by the muscles. The muscles in the body are enormously strong and this is how we can figure out how to solve for the strength and the force required of the muscles to do the various motions and the various exercises that the body does. That's how it's done.